Welcome to my channel. Now today I had wanted to present a video dedicated to um, pieces, time pieces that have been presented by subscribers to this channel. And I have received many requests for information about pieces that uh, uh, viewers have in their own uh, collections. Uh, that the, Generally these are pieces that have been handed down through the family and already many generations. And these are very interesting because pieces uh, of this variety of this nature in uh, private collections tend to be rather uh, interesting that we have a little bit of the province uh, where these pieces originated or a little bit of history with them. So in a way, this video uh, is uh, maybe useful for uh, museum staff, auctioneers, antiques experts, uh, watch historians, this type of thing, because we will be discussing um, these particular watches by their characteristics, dating, uh, maker, locations, and etc. This is uh, all information that we take into um, uh, consideration when determining uh, who is behind the watch. So let us begin. Uh, now I did want to address uh, one piece which, uh, this was submitted by um, Tim, who uh, did reach out and he has a Louis Montenden uh, gold, 18 karat gold uh, pocket watch. This is serial number 23435 uh, and Unfortunately, Tim did not reach out with the actual pictures of this piece. Uh, so if you're out there, Tim, <laughs> uh, please uh, submit your pictures and uh, we can double verify. However, based on this very limited information, uh, I do believe that this is a Louis Montandon piece. Uh, now this is signed uh, probably Geneva. I would imagine, as all pieces that we find with Louis Montandon generally tend to be signed Geneva. And uh, this is most likely uh, somewhere around 1850 to 1860 period. Now, the individual that um, we our spotlight is on is this Louis Auguste Montandon of La Chaux de Fonds. And we find him uh, in Devlin Almanacs fabricating from ma mainly two different um, locations uh, in La Chaux de Fonds. However, he appears to be the one who signs uh, Louis Montendon, uh, Geneva or Genève. And he was active according to Devlin Almanacs between uh, certainly the early 1840s up until uh, mid, at least mid 1870s. He died around 1880. So um, certainly uh, the period of his uh, uh, fabrication is is uh, closer to the uh, middle of the 19th century. Now, this is not to be confused with El Montand and Locla pieces. These are two different makers, and um, El Montand and Locla most almost certainly relates to uh, another watchmaker who was connected and associated with Montand and first Locla. So this is a distinction, uh, but we do have other Louis Montand pieces which are mid-century and um, they tend to be rather fine. And uh, these are also quite closely grouped with this general serial number as this piece here. So, but it would be nice to see the pictures. Now, uh, Louis Montandon, this is, we are speaking of Louis Auguste. He was married in Belgium at Mon, And uh, we have somewhat more information about this individual than others. In this case, we do have a picture uh, as he was associated with the uh, provisional government in Neuchâtel in 1848. And so I will provide a picture of him. Uh, so let us go on. The next, I do have five more pieces I would like to uh, uh, present. And the next piece was submitted by Nick and this is a very interesting piece. Uh, the province of this is, this was found at a garage sale in, in the United States, I believe, uh, in the Midwest. 
Um, however, uh, this piece is currently under restoration, and this is very fascinating. This is this is very um, hopeful, very promising uh, that uh, this uh, owner has take, taken it upon himself to uh, restore this piece. Uh, now, this is a, a piece that I have dating between 1860 to 1866, roughly. It's a key wind, key set piece. It's uh, made of silver, and it has an enamel dial, uh, which is signed with the serial number. And uh, the serial number of this piece we find on the movement as well. This is number 14599. And the movement itself is also signed very elaborately, J. Montandon. And this is almost certainly James Montandon. It, it could remotely be Jules. However, both of these individuals were uh, associated with Montana first. Now, James was one of the founding brothers. Uh, and we find him... He had spent time in Paris, then returned to Locla. We find him in saint Omnier, and later at Neuchâtel City. However, of, of this period, and it's interesting that this watch does not have a location. Uh, the, it, the location is not indicated. Uh, but this does very, very much look and smell like a James Montandon watch. Now, his son would later become a very big banker uh, in Neuchâtel and quite wealthy. He was, his name was also James. But uh, uh, we do have this piece and technical characteristics. We find this with Lepine style movement and we do see a fine silver stamp. And this is uh, these stamps, uh, the Neuchatel quality stamp for silver here. Uh, we find this up until 1866. Therefore, we are able, we do have this window of dating that this is approximately 1860 to 1866. Is after this time, this would no longer be applied, this uh, chevron. Uh, so, very, very intriguing piece, and I hope its restoration continues. Uh, it must be said that these are rather um, rarefied pieces, that these uh, watches signed J. Montenden are extremely rare. Uh, we don't have many instances or, or doc documentations of these pieces. So it's very uh, intriguing piece. Now, let us move on to um, our next submission. And this uh, is a watch uh, submitted by Andrew. Uh, and the province of this piece is, it was originally located, it originated in Mexico. Later it went to Spain, I believe Barcelona, but eventually it is with the owner in the United States on the Eastern coast, I believe. Uh, this piece is uh, dating from circa 1880 to 1890. It's a stem wind piece, uh, and its material is silver. So we have a serial number on this piece of 47535, and it is signed uh, Montendin Genève. Uh, now this is likely, this is very likely connected with uh, the Montendin first franchise. Um, that we do see this serial number in the um, mid early mid 1880s associated with other Montana first pieces and uh, it's not exactly clear uh, we are um, uh, it is <laughs> incumbent upon us to make our best determination and um, approximation of who is behind this now it very possibly could also be, this needs to be stated, that this also could be remotely a U Montenden Sumqua piece. Now, U Montenden, this is Eulis, the, ha the house of uh, Eulis Montendon. Uh, this was uh, located in Sumqua. They did uh, fabricate with various partners, and uh, often, they, especially with uh, Samuel Jacquard, and th th these pieces were signed Jacques de Montendon, uh, Genève, or Geneva. So clearly, this would this would be uh, a possibility. However, um, it's probably more likely that uh, he, this was a piece by Montana first. As we do know that they had three uh, fabrication locations: Besançon. Uh, this was approximately 1857 to uh, 1888. Uh, they had Locla, 
throughout the entire, uh, uh, well, from the beginning, uh, uh, in the early 1820s, all the way up until 1887, 1888, Rockwell, and then uh, Geneva was also started at around the same time, 1857, 1858, as uh, Besançon, and continued towards the end, as Locla would liquidate the, this chapter, and they would no longer uh, fabricate from on the Emperor's uh, brand. And these were watches that were being sold under a representative uh, in the Paris uh, office or uh, uh, the location, their sales location. This was on uh, the Rue Jean Jacques Rousseau. Uh, so uh, we have these possibilities. And this would also remotely be a piece that uh, Ulysse Montaigne and Robert of Geneva could have fabricated. It's, we do find him generally signing U Montaigne and Robert, uh, but he did sign Geneva. This, and this remains a possibility. But um, this, what is interesting about this piece is it is a very beautiful uh, moon phase uh, calendar watch. And this is, this is a watch with multiple complications. It um, appears to have a uh, mark in the case uh, which is WFRS. Now this is a WF capitalized. This is probably Western Frères uh, who uh, made the case for them. And this is rather um, intriguing, but this oh, it is uh, nice to see such uh, complex movement or com complex uh, uh, watches. And the movement itself feels like it may be uh, uh, FHF, uh, this is uh, Fontaine Melon, um, uh, the Roberts. Uh, this is not exactly clear, but this does look like this is relating to them. Uh, but yes, another very, very interesting piece, uh, uh, this to have such a, an astronomical uh, complex piece. And um, one of the other anchors to Montaigne and Perez, uh franchise is that we do know that Mexico was a very strong, uh, um, re very strong uh, segment of their uh, watch sales, and um, they appears to appear to have low, um, operated a very high quality, very deluxe uh, sector in Mexico. And we do find two articles in the Mexican press where uh, they have warned uh, the public to beware of counterfeit. Uh, products, but this does um, seem to relate to the Montana Prayers uh, franchise. Uh, let us continue to the following watch. Now, this is a very beautiful high-grade piece. This was submitted by Paul. Now, its province is very in interesting. Now, this also has a connection with Spain. This piece uh, originated in Spain. It's now in the eastern coast of the United States. Uh, however, um, this piece, uh, and we're dating this roughly uh, between 1881 to 1887. Uh, the, there is a Montana first uh, stamp, which is registered November 1880 in the case. Uh, now, this would have been used prior to the Montana first local liquidation uh, in 1887, 1888. However, um, Charles Albert Montana the son of Charles Adolf, uh, also established uh, around this early 1882-1883 period, uh, there had been a, a temporary bankruptcy in place. However, all of the debts were eventually amicably quashed. All uh, owned parties uh, received their money and Montana first continued under this name. However, there was a period where Another brand was established, a C.A. Montaigne de Locla, and this may have been an escape hatch for the business to um, fabricate under this name. But uh, as things went, uh, they didn't totally abandon, abandon the uh, brand, as we can see uh, pieces such as this. This appears to have been in this end period. Now, this is a stem wind type. Uh, it is, the material is 18 karat gold and it has uh, a metallic painted dial. And uh, once again, this is uh, a style that we see very often uh, 
realized from the Mexican market in particular, uh, which it indeed seems to have um, uh, origin. We do find it um, in Spain uh, materializing in an antique shop. And one interesting thing that the owner has uh, related is that um, now his family was living in Spain at the time, and this was in the early eighteen or early nineteen seventies, and the um, antique shop that this uh, was f acquired at, this was a shop in a small provincial town. And what is interesting here also is this backstory that this shop was frequented by the wife of dictator Francisco Franco, that she was, uh, Frank <laughs> Franco's wife was apparently very interested in antiques. And so she was a regular at the store and uh, this watch came out of this uh, store. This is a really interesting uh, backstory. However, continuing with the maker for this, this watch is clearly signed Montana and First Locla, so, and the location is Locla like, likewise. And the technical characteristics include its high grade movement. This is uh, uh, also with, we also find a stamp in the case RF in a circle. And this may relate to Robert Frères. Robert Frères uh, was behind the, uh, this was the organization behind what eventually became uh, the FHF at Fontainebleau, this um, uh, Fabrique uh, uh, de Horlagerie uh, Fontainebleau. So uh, very, very uh, high grade, very uh, beautiful 18 karat gold piece. and. Uh, this is the serial number, this 44196. This is at the larger end of Montana and Ferrer's fabricated pieces. So this is clearly in their end phase of uh, existence uh, in, in the watch uh, trade. This is very exciting. We only see a handful of these pieces from this uh, period that have been documented. So uh, let's continue with the uh, next submitter. And this subscriber, Michael W., uh, this piece is a very, very beautiful early piece. This is the province of this piece is that it was uh, recently acquired at an auction in Iowa. And I would date this to uh, probably uh, the 1850s to 1860s period. Uh, it's a key wine, key set piece. Its uh, material is silver. And uh, the serial number on this piece is uh, 10346. Now, the watch is signed Montenden and Co. Uh, this is possibly Henri Louis Montenden, who operated uh, throughout the 1850s under the name of Montenden and Co. or Montenden and Company, uh, with uh, several other, oh, he had two other Swiss partners. Uh, this is not exactly clear as this um, variety of signing. This is a name that is very, uh, this is a very common name with Mon Montana businessmen and watchmakers where they're using this formulaic approach. Uh, it is also possible that this piece was fabricated by, once again, uh, Hugh Montana of saint who uh, uh, did have a frequent um, partnerships uh, with uh, other local businessmen in the mountain communities of saint Croix, and we find him also signing Geneva, so uh, this cannot be totally excluded, but the location is Genève, Geneva, on this watch, and this is the technical characteristics of this piece. We have a white enamel painted dial. This is very beautifully painted, this um, idyllic scene, and this is a rather large uh, man's pocket watch. The diameter of this piece is 58 millimeters, which is quite big for uh, a pocket watch. Uh, so this is a very beautiful piece. Now, this piece uh, was eventually uh, offered for sale and I acquired this piece. Uh, so this is a rather unique uh, piece. This is one of the few painted dials by a Montana maker that I have seen that um, still appears to be in existence. Many of these obviously are in uh, private collections and uh, these very seldomly appear at auction. And when they do, then they're generally snapped up immediately. These are 
These are pieces that are highly sought, out, sought after. So because this would have been a hand uh, painted dial that uh, there, the person that made this uh, dial painting, this would have been um, probably a lady uh, painter, uh, so-called um, uh, painter en cadran. And uh, this type of work was generally reserved for women with very high dexterous art artistic um, abilities. So um, I would like to finish with a watch I have previously documented, but it is from another subscriber. And actually it's the only European uh, contributor that we have had. And this is uh, submitted by Jacques. Uh, and uh, this uh, comes from France. Uh, the provenance of this piece is very fascinating. I have documented this previously in other videos, but um, this was specifically made for a competition submitted by a mathematician during the French Revolutionary period. Uh, this was a Citoyen Rome, a Gilbert Rome, and uh, this uh, watch now, this was made for this competition in 1794 uh, for uh, watches uh, in French decimal time, or also called revolutionary time. So this was time based on the number 10. And this watch is uh, unique in that it has uh, the old uh, 12 base time, but also a, a small subdial uh, with the golden needle uh, in revolutionary time. And uh, this is very, very interesting. Now this watch was for some reason or another, was not accepted uh, by the competition according to some of the rules. It was returned to its makers and uh, Part of the uh, promise of this is that the makers uh, presented it to the mayor of Clermont-Ferrand. Now, the mayor uh, was a, um, a Freemason, and um, one of the makers certainly was a Freemason, but most likely both makers were uh, uh, involved in these Masonic circles. Now, uh, this passed on through the family uh, till today, so this is very uh, exciting that such an heirloom is retained by the family for uh, essentially several hundred years plus. Um, but the date on this is 1794. It comes from the um, date of the uh, uh, competition. And this is a key one, key set piece. Uh, the material is silver and it does have a golden hand for the French uh, decimal time uh, sub cadran or sub dial. Uh, the makers of this piece. This was, it's assigned Olfin et Montandon. And this is certainly Andre Olfin and Balthazar Montandon. And it is, the location is Clermont. It's signed A Clermont. And this is uh, in fascinating in that this piece is the only known and documented surviving Olfin et Montandon watch. There is uh, a second object, which is a dial only, uh, which is in my, I retain in my collection. And uh, this is an extremely rare, there are only three objects associated with these uh, fabricators. Uh, and one is a clock and it's, it's signed only Montanon à Clermont. So this relates specifically to Balthazar, very probably after the death of André uh, in 1807, but very possibly very uh, towards the very end of his life. Uh, but uh, this is, these are rare objects and uh, the technical characteristics of this particular watch. This is a coq fusée piece. It's a montre ronde. Now, I have only seen three Montandon pieces that are this from this period, either 1780s, 1790s. And this is one of those three. This is probably the third oldest uh, Montandon watch. Uh, there are two others preceding this uh, by Yerson in Montandon. And this is... Um, uh, one is in the Louvre and the other is in my collection. Uh, but these are both dating uh, probably in the mid to late 1780s. So they're just a few years to a decade older than this piece. But interestingly, uh, in, with this piece, the, the case is, there is a marking uh, either DMV or DMN, not exactly clear. This is the case maker. This was probably the Orfevre and uh, or uh, goldsmith, silversmith, the owner and I concluded that this is very probably 
David Montenden or David Montenden Baroda, his genealogical branch, he would have gone by Montenden Baroda. Uh, and it's very possible that his uh, cousins uh, were um, uh, cooperating and that uh, David did this case for Ofen and Montenden. Uh, now, Ofen and Montenden, they were uh, négociants et marchands, uh, but also uh, watchmakers. They were businessmen and watchmakers. They had multiple sides to their business, including textiles, and this is all part of a financial cycle that was followed. Uh, this was prior to the existence of uh, widespread banks, and there was a need to generate funds in certain locations and then realize the uh, profit, uh, etc. So, uh, but this is just a small uh, collection of these questions that have been submitted by uh, users and I hope that it was interesting and I hope it's of use in, in determining and identifying such uh, pieces. Uh, thank you for your attention and have a nice day.